Welcome to this week's TDD Weekly Report for the week ending March 10th. Thursday we had a solar flare come our way. Evidently it didn't cause much more problem other than some amateur radio operators reported there was noise when they were listening to the different frequencies, so it did cause a little bit of ruckus for the amateur radio operators, but as far as any satellites or any communication, uh, no power grids, nothing really got knocked out, nothing really got bothered. I didn't hear anything about northern lights were supposed to extend as far down as uh, the northern part of the United States where I live, but I didn't hear anybody seeing them, and it was too cloudy here for me to go out and actually check. It's not over yet, though, because the active region of the sun, I guess, is going to maybe hit us on a next go-around, although they don't think it'll probably be any worse than what we already experienced. Also, I have some news from Mars. There's a really good picture here on Discover, let's see, discovermagazine.com has a really nice picture of a dust devil going across Mars, and I guess this one sticks up for hundreds and hundreds of feet. It's a really cool picture, and they also have pictures of uh, a dust devil, of, a faraway picture of a dust devil leaving tracks across the surface of Mars. Really cool. We'll be doing more Mars stuff as we get closer and closer with the... Uh, soon to be new lander that's going to explore the surface of Mars. This article was sent to me by Hank Two Wheels. Thank you for sending this article in. Uh, evidently in Cuba they had uh, they no longer raise as much sugar cane as they used to so you have a lot of farmland very fertile and it's been taken over by this weed called marabou or marabou I don't know exactly how you pronounce it and they cannot find a use they couldn't at first at least find a use for this weed it's uh, a shrub kind of thing that was imported for the flowers and the wood isn't really that much useful for burning because it's too smoky when it burns well in Strathclyde University which is in Scotland they found out that this stuff can be used for a very inexpensive way to make activated charcoal and if you know anything about activated charcoal there are a lot of industries it's used for filtration and distillery industries and water purification and just there's thousands of industries that have a need for activated charcoal and to be able to produce it cheaply as a matter of fact I think Cuba spends millions of dollars importing activated charcoal for using in their distilleries and now that they know this plant that was a weed can be used to produce way more inexpensive activated charcoal and to be able to do it natively this is really going to help it's nice because this article is, even though it's from the BBC, it's bbc.co.uk, and as usual, links down below. Uh, this video does actually play for U.S. viewers, so if you do click on it, um, at least I know it played for me, so it's one of those that's actually not blocked for our region. I know a lot of times when I go to BBC news sites, it's kind of disappointing because I click on a video and it's restricted to our particular area in the U.S. and maybe anywhere that it's not a um, U.K. area, according to your IP. And last up, I like to do this about once a year or so. I like to go over what software people are using, and I'd like my viewers to participate in this too. Uh, either make a video or comments down below or whatever you feel like, but just to go over what is the basic software you use and what is the basic hardware you use as a vlogger. So I'm going to go over what I'm using right now as far as a browser. My main browser is still Firefox, although I do use a lot of the others. I use Safari, I use Chrome, um, I use IE even once in a while, not too often. Um, I'm sticking with Firefox. It's not the best performing one. It's adequate, but I'm sticking with it probably two reasons out of just loyalty to the open source community and the fact that all the plugins that I have that work the way I want. So it's more or less familiarity. Um, I could see if you're into performance, um, leaving Firefox by the side and going with Chrome or something like that. I think even in some video playing, I think Safari on Windows even is a little bit more superior in the video play I've found. But um, still for the time being still sticking with Firefox operating system I am finally learning Windows 7 I've been a real loyal Windows XP user and still the majority of my machines use Windows XP um, I don't have anything to say good about Windows Vista it just uh, I had no desire to put it on any machine I had a machine that I got with it on there took it off right away but I am learning Windows 7 it seems to be a very good system every bit as good as far as performance as Windows XP um, it's lacking some menu choices especially in the search I noticed in Windows 7 without typing in special search terms you don't you can't just easily search for files by size like you can in Windows XP I have no idea why they took out a feature like that to me that seems to be a real useful feature and there's um, 
a few more menu drill downs you have to do in Windows 7 compared to Windows XP. Don't like that either. It should have been as easy or just as, you know, you shouldn't have to go down three levels when you used to go down two levels to find an item in Windows XP. But other than that, Windows 7 will be okay. I'll, I'll probably eventually migrate to it. In a couple of years, I will probably be mostly Windows 7. Editing software. Cheap or free? I still go with Windows Movie Maker for cheap or free. It comes with the operating system. It works and it does what I need to do when I just want to do a simple edit. The majority of the TDD reports are done on Windows Movie Maker. For mid-level software, I'm going with AVS Video Editor still. You can get for around 59 bucks if you look on, on the site. You can get a lifetime subscription and updates to all of their software, everything that they make. So um, can't get a better deal than that. AVS also is compatible with almost any file type. You can drag and drop anything into it, and it pretty much just will work. And that's another thing I like about it. For top end, I'm still going with Magic 17. It's I call it a top end because it used to cost several hundred bucks, but now that it's, uh, I think Magic 8, Magic's 18 is out, maybe even 19. Um, you can get it now for probably about the same as AVS. Really look online and you can probably find a used copy of Magic 17 for around 50, 60 bucks. So um, even though it's top of the line as far as performance, in my opinion, um, about the same cost as a mid-level software. I know a lot of people like Adobe Premiere. I've used it. Um, yeah, it's even more powerful and you can do more stuff than even in Magix, but uh, is it something you're really going to do? I mean, if it's uh, if you're that into the video editing, then you know why you're using it. I think Adobe is difficult to use, but um, you can practically do anything with it. So if some of you probably do use Adobe Premiere. Um, I used to, but I don't really anymore because Magix is just so much easier to use. Uh, as far as hardware, vlogging hardware, if you want a cheap, easy camera, I still recommend, and especially the newer ones, they're knockoffs, but the MD80 clones that you can get at eBay or various places, you can get for around 10 bucks. Uh, if you want to know even more about them, I would say the guy that I know that seems to be an expert on the MD80 clones is Big Bill Chicago. So go to him if you want to know about that. Um, I've got one of the ones that uh, Big Bill Chicago did buy, and I noticed on the newer MD80 clones, the sound is very good now. The sound is not... Um, any problem whatsoever. Um, it's uh, good quality. The picture, um, it's VGA, you know, it's 640 by 480, but it's a functional picture. And with that and the good sound, I don't think you can do any better. I mean, I think even if you don't make much effort, you can still find them for 20 bucks or less online. Mid level camera, I'm still recommended the Vado HD. I don't think you can find as easily anymore the second generations. I think they're being bought out. So, uh, they may not be as easy to find, but the third generation is just fine too. And with the third generation, you do have an input for a microphone. So if you wish to use an uh, um, external microphone, that's no problem with the new uh, Vado third generation HD. For top of the line, now right now there's three players. There's GoPro, there's Contour, uh, although Contour isn't probably a big player in the market, and the Drift. The Drift is the new, the new greatest thing. Um, They'll all serve you well. I think they're all pretty decent, pretty good cameras. I, myself, uh, if I had a choice, I would still choose with the GoPro myself, mostly because I have all the accessories to fit it. I'm familiar with it, but uh, you won't go wrong with either the Drift or the Contour either. But my recommendations, and um, if you, especially if you plan on doing anything at night, the GoPro 2 is just phenomenal in low light conditions compared to the other cameras, in my opinion. So, uh, But all things being equal with good lighting, I don't think you'll be disappointed with any ones if you have a if you have a top of the line budget and don't mind spending around 300 bucks or so, um, plus probably extra for accessories you're going to be buying with it. But if uh, budget isn't a consideration, any of those three cameras will serve you well. My recommendation: GoPro. So anyway, that's it for this week. Take care, everybody. I will catch you next week.